Welcome back to the shop guys. Today I'm going to be working again on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. I'm going to show you how I do an oil change. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but real quick, let's just talk about maintenance in general, since that's kind of what this channel is. Now I do my own maintenance, A, to save money, and because I think I can do it better than most places you go to. Talking about maintenance in general is kind of like talking about what the most important organ in your body is. You need them all, but maybe there's some that are more important than others. In a car, an oil change is one of the most important things you can do. So I estimate that I use about 50 quarts a year to maintain my fleet. So if I didn't do it this way, it would be very expensive to maintain. So an oil change on the Jeep Grand Cherokee is very simple. You don't even need to put it in the air. I put it on the air just so I could film. Honestly, I do these on the ground. I do them regularly just because it saves me five minutes of time getting it on the lift. Uh, tool wise, you really don't need a whole lot. You need just a 13 millimeter on a ratchet or a wrench and then some kind of oil filter tool, whatever is your pick. Uh, I really like these. I'll put the part number in the description and then a drain pan. So let's pull you in here so you can see what we're dealing with. So contrary to popular belief, there actually is never been a panel here from the factory. It looks like they may be intended. So, so if you're just missing, it's okay. They never came with one. Uh, we have a drain plug there, 13 millimeter. And then the oil filter is just above that. So simply what we're going to do is we're going to do the oil filter first, let it drain and then plug. Okay, let's get in there. So I have removed the splash shield just so you guys can see. You do not actually need to remove it to do this work. So we're going to put an oil filter wrench onto the oil filter. This that I really like this type works pretty well. Let's get it spinning. Usually once you break them loose, they come loose easily. As soon as you feel it loosen up, it's time to get your drain pan underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and spin it off. Now, obviously, that's going to drain for a few minutes. Uh, while we're letting it drip, I'm going to go ahead and undo the drain plug for the sump to get it draining. Now, careful, obviously, if your motor was run recently, it is going to be warm, uh, but uh, this one sat overnight. Okay, so while this is draining right now, let me talk a bit about why I like good oil. So I worked at a chain auto shop for a while and they had their own brand of oil and we saw a lot of the same cars over the years come in. The, when you use conventional oil and it gets hot and you don't change it on regular intervals, it, it like coagulate and we would take valve covers off and just be full of almost like jello. Now this video is not about what is the best kind of oil because like politics, people argue about oil all the time and I'm not gonna do that. There are a lot of good oils. So the one I like to use that I get cheap is Mobile One. Now nobody's gonna say that this is a bad oil. It is a very, very, very good oil. Now the reason I use this mostly is because you can get these on sale for dirt cheap. Uh, between two and three dollars a quart. Now I also use, you know, Redline. I use Pins Oil. I'm, I'm not partial to any brand. Like I said, there's a lot of good ones. So the cool thing about these is you can buy these jugs at Walmart if you're in the states. They typically are between 22, 25 bucks. And then every year for the last almost 10 years, Mobile One has put out mail-in rebates. I've gotten every single one. It's not like a scam or anything like that. So they put out a 10 to 15 dollar mail-in rebate which makes these between 10 and $15 total once you get your rebate back. So now obviously you need seven quarts to do an oil change, so you're gonna have to buy two of these. So I just go ahead and buy the max you can get with the rebate. So I usually can get four of these a year, and that allows me to use a good oil brand for cheap. So the other thing we're gonna talk about is oil filters. And just like oil, people like to argue about these. Uh, you can't go wrong if you use the factory one. So the Jeep gets the Mopar one, the Chevys get AC Delco, the Mercedes gets the man filters or whatever, just whatever's OEM. Okay guys, so we are almost done. So next thing is just to put the oil filter on. So one of my pet peeves, I never like to install these dry, meaning I always fill them up as much as I possibly can. So on a car where they install like this, I'll fill it up to the brim. That way when you start the car, instantly gets oil pressure, no dry bearings at all. Well on this one there, it is angled this way. So we're really only gonna be able to fill it up this full, but any bit helps. Once that settles, that'll probably be about two thirds, which will be fine. And then of course, everybody should know this. You need to put a slight smearing of the uh, oil around the edge, around the gasket so it can slide on easily. Now, usually I like to let everything drain for a long time until the drips stop. I just like to get every bit of uh, old oil out of there. So we do want to use a clean rag, clean around the oil filter housing, make sure there's no dirt and obviously make sure that you don't get any any contaminates on the inside or on the gasket area. So now our oil filter, two thirds full, hopefully. Let's slap it on, a little bit too full, whatever. Spin it on there. 
Okay, so oil filter is usually just a good nice and snug. You don't want to crank it down, but it does need to be uh, just hand tight is the best you can do. Next thing we're going to do is the drain plug. So just obviously take a rag, make sure there's no contaminates on it. If it has a magnet, clean the magnet off. Make sure that the rubber gasket is still on there and in good shape. Otherwise, you're going to have to go get a new one. And we're ready to install it. So I'm just going to do a quick wipe around the drain plug. Install this. Now the torque on these is 25 foot pounds or just good and tight. Never over crank it. All right. And now that we're all buttoned back up, it's time to go up top and fill it with oil and we're done. So two more steps here, obviously putting in the oil. Never forget to do this part. I want to use just a good funnel and that'll be able to get it in there. So we're shooting for seven quarts, but we're going to stop at six at first. So that's going to be the full tank of this and then a little bit of another one. And that's when we'll start it and check on it. So oil change intervals on these, according to the manual, uh, 11 through 13s, it tells you to do it every six months or 6,000 miles. Um, on 2014 and up, same motor, they switched it to 10,000 miles or 12 months. So uh, that's when it's supposed to tell you to do it. I'll show you how to reset it here shortly. Once you get six in there, at least should show up on the dipstick. So let's go ahead and... Okay, so I'm just at the very bottom of the range. So let's go ahead and get it started. Now we're going to reset the oil change indicator on the dash. So every time I start this right now, it beeps at me and says oil change due. So it's actually pretty easy, simple. If you have a key, you're going to want to put it in and turn it to the on, but don't start. If you have the uh, push button start like this, push it twice until you're in run mode. Now we're gonna push the gas pedal down all the way down three times and then turn the car back off without hitting the brake. So one, two, three, and then we're gonna turn the car off. So now that should have reset the oil change indicator. So now we can actually hold down the brake with the car start, make sure we have oil pressure. All right, so we're showing oil pressure. All right, so we put all seven quarts in there. It looks like that uh, set the oil level perfectly. We're going to put our cap back on there. Check it one last time to make sure we're in the right zone. As you can see, right at the top of the range. So the last thing you need to do on an oil change is get rid of the oil. So in the state of Florida, if you sell oil, they have to take oil. So I usually just take it back to Walmart or AutoZone, and they let you dump it for free in their little containers. All right, guys, so we are done. We've got a fresh oil change in here, seven quarts of Mobile One 5W20 and a new filter for less than 25 bucks. Now I'm backing up that number because I'm buying those jugs of Mobile One at Walmart for 22, 25 bucks and then getting a rebate of between 10 and $15 per jug on them. So that averages about $2.50 for the Mobile One. That comes out to $17.50 for the seven quarts. And then I get the filters from Amazon or eBay I buy them in five packs and they come out to about seven or eight bucks total. So anyway, the 17 plus the eight comes out to about 25 bucks. Disposing the oil is free at AutoZone. So, I mean, that is a great way to take care of this or any of my other cars. Plus the peace of mind to know that I'm using synthetic in all my cars and they're not going to have an issue related to oil. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'd appreciate you guys hitting that like button and consider subscribing. I do these for free for you guys. So thanks for watching.